Beloved, this uh, step 14 in Psalm 133 probably is the closest to my heart. It's the vision of the body of Christ. It's uh, something that he brought inside me maybe 40 years ago as I was seeking him, desiring him, and had revelations of him. He showed me that this is a real thing. She is real. The church, the body, the temple, the bride, all of these are names that show some representation of who she is. So wonderful. I know it's the plan that the Father had before, before the foundation of the world. That is the reason the Lamb was slain. That is the thought that the will of God counseled him into building, into bringing a body you prepared, a body you prepared for me. This is your will, Father, a body you have prepared. In uh, Psalm 133, verse 1, which is very dear to my heart, it starts saying, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Maybe you are still, maybe a little bit fascinated of all these Psalms of Ascents and how do they go one after another after another. When he showed me that, I was um, absolutely in amazement. I didn't know, it. is it real? I kept looking at those steps and the levels. And when I came here, I realized that all those steps, all that forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power of sin and understanding how to abide in Him, all that growth, the form, that, that building of that special Son of Man, the soul, everything was towards the plan that the Father had before the beginning, before anything was there. I know it's beyond our imagination that we were His plan. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How glorious you are. Thank you, Father. Of course, He starts saying, Behold, Start saying, Behold, just doesn't mean to just take a look. Once in a while, remember, it's so deep, so strong. It means look carefully, pay close attention, analyze with intensity because it's the most important thing I want to show you. You know, where that. Um, that word behold is in the New Testament because I, I think it's it's so so close to Psalm 133 it's 1st John 3 a place where every time we go to it's out of this world for sure Verse 1, Behold. See? It's coming right through the centuries. And it's the word 
of the Holy Spirit coming to you and says, Behold, what exotic, yeah, this is wist, what exotic, foreign to, to the human heart, exotic. Love, the Father has permanently bestowed upon us to the end that we may be named children, born ones, sons of God. What kind of love is that? And we are. Hallelujah. On this account, the world does not have an experiential knowledge of us. And you thought that people are going to figure it out who you are? And they're going to come to you and say, You are so deep and you know the Lord so much. And can you help me? Who are you? You go to a church and you start singing something. And, and people find and they start almost worshiping. It's like, wow, who are you, my brother, my sister? No. Not, not even people in the body of Christ, they, they, they barely can see who you really are. They don't have an experiential knowledge of us unless the Father reveals the Son to them. Only the Father can reveal who you really are to others. That's Him. Because it, the world has not come into an experiential knowledge of Him divinely loved ones now born ones of God we are and not yet has it been made visible what we shall be we know absolutely that whenever it is made visible like once to him we shall be because we shall see him just as he is. It's a matter of beholding. What you are beholding, you are more like it. This is what the Holy Spirit wants now to really bring this living, glorious Son of God in front of you. And He said, you are becoming as glorious like Him as you behold the love of God that brought this to you, that made you capable to even open your inner eyes to look at the glorious one. It's the love of the Father. Behold. In 1 Peter 1.12 talks about this import, the importance of this beholding. And he talks about all the saints of the Old Testament. I know sometimes I'm thinking that um, Moses and Elijah, they were promised somehow during their lives that they'll see something of the glory of the Lord. So that promise was fulfilled on the Mount of Transfiguration. Because none of the saints of the Old Testament could see what you are seeing. But Moses and Elijah got an early peek to kind of see through. It's like, oh, really? Yes. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, 
they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit. Send from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Not just the saints of the Old Testament, but all the angels of heaven. They would give anything just to peek through and see what you see 24 hours a day. You understand? The glory of Jesus, the beautiful beauty of Christ, your bridegroom, the way the Holy Spirit loves him and brings him to you and presents it to you. The glorious Lord. And through the Son, the amazing Father that loves. And the love of the Father. This is always open to you. Angels of heaven would like at least for a split second, but you, through the gospel of Jesus, you can continually look at that. You know what they want to see? The beauty of the bride, the glory. The one that was in the plan of the Father before anything else existed. You were the purpose. And the heaven got, a, got news about it, heard rumors about it. Some people think that uh, Lucifer actually got jealous because of that. I'm not sure. I know that who we are as the bride of Christ, as the brethren that live together in Him, it's such a glorious, such a glorious scenery. The body that experiences the love of God that love that we behold. I know lots of you experienced at least a little bit of that love. Seeing the Lord in the person next to you, in the brother, in the sister. Even if maybe you are very different, maybe you have different doctrine, understanding, experiences, different experiences in life. But somehow, the same Christ, it makes you be so in love, so in love with the other part of you. And you are another part of her, of him. It's the bond of love. We were created for this purpose, to dwell together with Him as one body, members in particular of one another. That we cannot live without one another. This is the heart of God. And I love that David got a glimpse of it in Psalm 133. It is good and it is pleasant. The word good there again is the same word in Hebrew that's used in Genesis 1 when God created and He found it good. He created the light, the day, the night, the, and He said He looked at them and found them good. It is good 
This is beyond any other creation. This is the body of Christ, the bride. That's one with the bridegroom because it was taken out of him and now it's presented back to himself. It's pleasant, enjoyable, sweet, lovely. No fear of being misunderstood or hurt. Being so pleased to be vulnerable to the love of God in you. No carnal relationships determined by outside appearance. Only pure and fervent and sincere love. First Peter 1.22 I'll, I'll get this in waste but I have it here. Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. It's so powerful. This is the plan the Father had with the Word and the Holy Spirit in Christ for Christ and through Christ. It's the plan that he, he had. What do you say? What do you say about the memories of this earth? What happened? What didn't happen? What could have happened? What do you say when you understand that you were His purpose? And now you hear this word and the love of the Father is ministering to you and is drawing you to himself. How beautiful. How beautiful is him. I see how he reveals himself to you, healing old wounds breaking any bondage and making you one with himself. Yes, behold, beloved.